Previously, we left the weather just to fish the other weather on the south coast. Markets sound like they're starting to lift. This isn't time to stop. This boat has to come back with a ton and a half at $50. It's lobster season in the waters of Tasmania's rugged coast. Old times are saying a boat should have been shot at. Right or wrong, what's the etiquette? If I had a gun on board yesterday, I probably nearly would have fired a shot at you. Three oh, hardcore yeah. lobstermen are battling for the biggest catch and the best price. There's a banana on Squizz's boat with his face on it. Bit of bad luck might rub off on him. I got rid of the banana, but the bad voodoo is still on this boat. He's playing a dangerous game, the boy, he really is. We're having a roast with Glenn. Yeah. If you want to join us, more than welcome. It'd be good to have kick close to him. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I'll come to the truce meeting. You said truce, so... If this dinner turns out to be a fake and they're just there to egg us and destroy the boat, there will be a retaliation. On the hunt for Brindle lobsters, the Chieftain crew has been forced into deeper waters and into the jaws of an angry southern ocean. Keep an eye out for the gear at the moment. She's sort of got that four to six metre swell. You can only really see what's in the wave column you're in. So you've got to make sure you're not lined up to run a pot over. It's just always watching what's behind you. They're the ones that are the scary ones. The ones in front of you, at least you know they're coming. Working in these sorts of conditions is very dangerous. There's no doubt about it. If Lockie's not paying attention, I'm not paying attention, someone can get hurt and someone can die. Hold on. It's not fun. It's a hard work. You're wearing a, a full raincoat that acts like a bit of a, a parachute. The wind picks up, you blow side to side. You're lifting pots that weigh 30 to 60 kilos. It's not easy work. And Lockie's only a small fella, and he's putting the hard yards in. But today, everything's against him. Oh. He's not a fan when the bins start flying around the deck and making a mess. Ruins up his little system. So he takes his anger out on things. And then a pot fell and lightly touched his leg. That's why you wear steel caps, but some people won't wear them because they're too heavy for my feet. The Chieftain crew is sitting last on the tally board and has no choice but to push through. We're pushing 40 knots, gusts of 50 nearly, I reckon. Picks up as it comes down off the land and around the cape. I'm not too sure about the tide. I know it's running the opposite direction to the wind. It's quite a ways you're standing up. And that wind chill drops the temperature on deck to three degrees Celsius. Go fishing, they say. It'll be fun, they say. There's a lot happening here. One of them line bins shoot across the deck and smack Lockie. He's out. He's done. If you start dealing with weather like this, it's more about the time you're in rather than what's later. We still need 300 more to make money. That's only one shot. Weather's turning and it'll ruin the whole the area we need to go. These are the days. I used to hate being a decky, catching no craze. <laughs> she long the whole morning. She's just started coming in again. It's not very nice of a morning, but the pots aren't too bad, so that's all right. You wouldn't want to do the job without a good pair of wet weathers. Four hours to the east, the conditions are wet, but a little less wild. The Anson's Bay crew is pulling their night shot. Look at him go. He knows what he's doing, the boy. We're up in the bay, like, cops a bit of a hiding, so... Look, we're not expecting a super-duper number, but, you know, what it is what it is. They're all rats, man. They're all rats. They're, like, not tiny rats, though. They're all sort of... You have to measure them. 
when there's a little bit of swell on, you've got to be careful when you're walking up the deck. You've got freezer hatches that stick out off the bottom this far. You've got cause hatch that sticks out this far. So you've got to be careful. You've got to walk around all that. You don't want to fall over the pot. And you want to stack them nice when you're in a good bit of swell so they don't roll off and hit you or anything. There's plenty of wind about this morning, but if we was out in the open where Squiz was, like, she'd be pretty dirty out there. Ah, oh, Squiz, that's just Squiz. He's always, that's just, I would sooner just have him up in the bay, get less fish and all do easier. That's just the way I've gone as I'm getting older, I suppose. Line bin's just busted off at the front. It's about to fall over and we'll be picking up ropes for a week. A lot of weight there, there's hundreds of kilos. Hundreds of kilos just moving around when the boat moves. So they've got to be secure. After a late start, the bold contender crew is punching through rough swell to reach their night shot. I just back the ride off the cave. We don't want another wave coming over the edge and knocking him on his ass. These waters are a favourite hunting ground for Squizzy, but they're also dangerous. Wind gusts can reach 200 kilometres per hour. You always got to protect the crew. I'll just uh, go with it for a bit. We're going off course, but um, it protects Tabor while he's up the bow. So I've just turned with the weather a bit while Tabor fixes the problem. It's turned into a very uh, ordinary day now. With just 24 hours before they unload, Squizzy is hell-bent on fishing till the bitter end. We're just going to have one more shot, try and build up some numbers. Price has gone up on the brindles, and I think it might go up a few more bucks as well, so we'll just build some more numbers while we can. We're here. We're already wet. It's what we do, man. We're fishermen. I want to finish on a high, get as many as we can in this tank. If we catch another 200 lobsters over today and tomorrow, you know, that's another $7,500. You know, that's a boat payment for the month. That's what I'm thinking. Also playing on his mind is tonight's peace treaty. Yeah, I'm not sure if Bryce will turn up to our invitation of a roast with us and Glenn. I hope he does. Bryce has been hiding from us. He's been running from us as well. So I'm just going to wait for the right moment and hopefully we get that moment to uh, stain that nice paintwork. You know? I look back on it, the last two, three years, he's come a long way. You've got to give him credit for that. You know, and to stay up there in this kind of weather, what's forecast, straight on him. Reminds me of me 10 years ago. You've got to have the drive to do this job. And probably one day, he might knock me off my perch. There will come a day, because that's just nature. That's just, I'll get old, slow. I'll be sitting at home on the couch when it's a little bit of wind around and just that's how, that's how it goes. It is a hard job, physically hard job. But look how hard Tabor works. Eventually it'll catch up with him too. I'm 45. We're not the old contender yet, but we're getting there. Wouldn't be a night if we were catching fish. We really need that tonne and a half just to make money this trip. With these prices, with the way things are looking, a tonne and a half is really a break even. Just want to catch fish. That's all we want. Fish in the pots, some money in my bank account. Finally, a good pot. Seven. Watch out. Hold on. This is going to be a big one. Oh, hold on. Whoa. Hold on. Gold. Oh. If Bryce didn't say that, we cop that side on. That would have been real bad. People will be surprised with how little water you need to hit the side of the boat to make someone go flying to the other side. We need to be really careful today. It's important for the crew to be looking out to what's coming, not just looking down at what they're doing. You try your best to look out for every wave, but sometimes they need to look out for themselves as well. But yeah, I've got to focus on everything. I've got to know when the next pot's coming. I've got to make sure all my pots are stacked and not flying around. 
Gotta watch out for waves so I don't get washed over them. Trying to knock me out. I wasn't looking. That's why I always prepare for the unexpected. I'm looking forward to tonight. I'm looking forward to just sitting back, relaxing, and um, having a nice roast and maybe a couple of beers and just having a, a chin wag. There you go, mate. Yeah, good. I'll do the potatoes tonight if you want. Yeah, well, we don't peel spuds on this boat. Mate, I've got bloody good King Edward spuds, mate. They're worth heaps. <laughs> After unloading a good catch at $50 a kilo and having all that money in his pocket, he should take us out to a Fancy uh, dinner, not a barbecue. All right, mate, I'll get into them and I'll see you when you get out of here. I'll uh, get off this for a bit and then uh, get into it. Roger, mate. Oh, we've had a couple of good pots this morning so far, a couple of sixes. And then you get a pot like that. Not much in it for us. After locking in a deal yesterday, the bold contender crew is motivated to keep filling its tanks. Squizzy's buyer is paying $45 per kilogram for brindles and $50 for reds. All they need now are more lobsters and for the market to stay up. Shalco's cool. They're one of the biggest buyers here in Tasmania and I sell to them a lot. Dave! Not much, mate. Not much. Look, at the end of the day, we want the best price we can get. Sometimes you can lock in too early, and sometimes you lock in too late. I'll be in text range this afternoon, so send it to me. All right, Dave. I'll send it through to Starbucks, buddy. Radio, see ya. Bye, mate. <laughs> that was Salco. That they were just saying the uh, small price is $60 a kilo. That's a $10 per kilo premium on yesterday's deal with Buyer Mel. You know, in hindsight, probably jumped the gun a bit. Should have waited another day. But uh, it's all a gamble and I was playing safe. I'm hoping Mel comes up on the price. I'm pretty confident she will. But if she don't, this is going to hurt. Everything's up in the air, it really is. Just another day, being a lobster fisherman in Tasmania, where everything changes just like that. Small fish under 800 grams, you're 60 bucks. Small fish under 800 grams are 60 bucks. News of the price increase is spreading through the fleet, and it's taking some by surprise. This is the first time in a long time that the small fish have been worth more money than the big ones. So, like, I've got no idea what's going on. South Scalor. A lot of fishermen will say octopus are our worst friend. No, I disagree. I reckon these saps are our worst friend. They're a lobster snack and they bloody love them. Salps are from a group of animals known as sea squirts. In terms of scientific classification, they're closer to humans than jellyfish. They just fall down, land all over the seafloor, lobsters come out of their little caves and snack on them all day long. So therefore, our numbers are low and we're not getting what we need. What are we shooting back here? OK, good. That way. With the lobsters full of salps, they didn't take the chieftain's bait. This shot has been a disaster. They've averaged less than two a pot. 81, I think. So not very good. It's the lowest shot, I think, for the trip. Yeah, it was really open, the 150 mark on that one. But things just aren't looking good. Lockie's not happy. I'm not happy. There's not a lot we can do about it. We just need to move on. We're heading east along the bottom of Tassie. Uh, we're about four, four hours away before we get to the southeast cape. We'll figure out the next move once we get out of this. Yeah. See what happens. I'm trying to figure out where we can get some more lobster. Glenn. Hey, how you going? How you been going with him? I was expecting at least one 
50, but that didn't happen at all. We only ended up with 81, so... I was going to say, if you got any more than 69, you bet us. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll be a first. Are you having a roast tonight? As long as I'm not the one getting roasted, I'm happy. Yep, no, that sounds a plan then. That sounds a plan. We should nearly be able to tie up. I reckon, mate, up in research here, yeah, maybe have a quiet beer or something. Indeed. I reckon we nearly earned it. I reckon you definitely have. You've been at sea for nearly 25 days now. <laughs> and we haven't been catching much since we come out. Should have come back up the coast with you boys, I think. Yeah, yep, yep. The price is going up, though. Dave just sent me through their prices, and they were 60 bucks for under 800. South Coast prices have gone up. I didn't know anything about that, but Glenn does, and he doesn't even sell to them. So it sounds like I need to make a phone call and see what the hell's going on. Look at that for a pot. I haven't seen fish like that here before. Normally ratty. Last pot coming up. Been a slow old day. Shot looks pretty good. So it's heaps more than what I thought. And it's a bit of a lazy shot too. I sort of try to protect us from the weather a bit. Getting uh, a little bit uh, lazy in the old age, I think. Oh, we ended up 175 for the night shot. That's 75 more than what I thought I'd get. So that's great. Our first shot at South Cape was 174. Our last shot is 175. I think I should have another shot tonight and get 176. I'll be happy with that going home. Squizzy's making a late charge up the tally board. He now trails Glenn by only 211 lobsters. Bryce could catch the others. All he needs is one mega shot. But can he do it? It's just now uh, sorting out the fish buyer and see what the final number is. Sounds like the market's going up every day. So uh, I'm hoping Mill will uh, work with me and uh, we get the best outcome for us. The Sarko deal is only on the small ones. We're better off where we're going. Nah. I feel heaps better now, Toad. It just made me feel sick. As a fisherman, you make decisions every day. And sometimes you get that decision wrong. But you just got to move on and make sure the next decision you make is the right one. I don't think it's going to be much difference between the two companies, beach price-wise. At the end of the day, I just want an all-in price. You know what you're bloody well getting. If it's 50 bucks and you've got a ton on, it's 50 grand. If it's $50 for this, $45 for that, $48 for that, $47 for this, and we've got a ton on. I don't know. Yep. Yeah, we've just come up to research here, a bit closer to home, running two and a quarter hours away from home from here, so just throw them in and unload tomorrow. The boys will have to tidy the boat up, give the deck mats and everything a good old scrub, so it's a good chance to get all that done and get home nice and early in the morning. Yeah, man, almost home. Yeah, he's going to be on his knees in the toothbrush. It's his deck. He's pretty lucky, really, because a lot of people make and pull the mats up and scrub them every day and muck about. Like, I used to hate doing that, so I'm pretty casual. I'm just at the end of the trip. We give her a good clean up, and she's clean when we go in. That's the main thing. So we don't care, really, what we live like out here. We're pretty rough. We only wash up when we have to. We're out there to work. And that's what I put my heart and soul into is working. Setting pots, and pulling pots, that's what I do. The only time the boat is clean is when we leave the wharf and when we're going back to the wharf. The rest of the time, we don't care. With Snotty's final shot of the trip in the water and with the market on the move, his attention turns to his own deal with Buyer Steve. What's going on, old boy? Not much. What are you up to? Oh, just playing around. To go. You happy to take these fish tomorrow, mate? Yep. Sweet. What sort of time? Uh, 8.30, we'll have them on board. 9.30, about 10.30, I reckon. All right. Uh, well, yeah, that's about all. Oh, I thought you was going to say the price had gone up or something. Uh, no, not yet. It's how it goes, as, but only for the little, little ones. Have you, have you heard that, have you? What's that? 
Lights out goes 60 bucks for under 800 grams. Still only 45 from eights to bloody two and a half, though. Yeah, right. As far as Steve's concerned, the price hasn't changed. Like, that's a big difference, isn't it, when you're talking that? Like, oh, if I could get $60 for me little ones, yeah, I'm not, I'm not bound by anyone. I'll sell to anyone. If I can get more money, I'll sell to them. But, like, with the amount of fish we got on, I'll have to go through everything and work out whether it's financially worth selling to the other people because, like, for an extra two or three hundred dollars, you're not going to jump ship. Catch you tomorrow. Beauty. Sir. Bryce! Yo, how you going? Yeah, not bad, mate. What's, uh, where you... Shooting tonight, or you're not shooting tonight? Oh, yeah, I am. Um, outside Dacteen's Island, 20 fathom stuff, I reckon. Yep, no, that's where I was going to pop in too, so. Oh, yeah, uh, there's plenty of bottom there, so should be right. Yeah, and Glenn, I'd say he's in shore, isn't he? Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, nah, he's having one more shot going in tomorrow too. All right, well, we'll see you up the road here. All right, kill them spuds. Oh, I think Glenn was doing spuds, actually. So, we'll work her out. All right, I'll talk to you shortly. He's pretty keen to have a bit of a dinner tonight, me, Glenn and Squiz and, and the crew. I think we're going to have it on the Chieftain. There's just a bit more room. It's a bit cleaner. We look after it a bit better, so we'll have it on the Chieftain and I don't mind doing the clean-up afterwards, just in case there's some repercussions of my childish behaviour. He sounds happier, probably because he's going home tomorrow. Less to stress about. However, we still don't have enough fish on to be happy. And that's the difference between having a few years' experience and 30 years' experience is, you know, they can pull much larger numbers out of, uh, out of the same area that I could be working, just because they know that these little bits here and there are, are very productive. And I'm really hoping this dinner is just all about friends catching up, but deep down inside, I don't feel like that at all. I feel like there's a bit of a revenge to be had. I can picture myself steaming in there with the two of them tied up. Just as we get close, next minute, bombarded. So, won't lie, eggs are going to be sitting on the dash ready to go, and I'll even have my wets on, because he's going to get his revenge with the eggs. I don't deserve to be egged. I didn't put bananas on boats. I think that might be appropriate. I might have to send Squizzy a quick message. But then again, we're Team Chieftain. There's no iron team. Speak of the devil. He's probably got me in the, the best place to throw an egg. Speaking of the devil, he's pulling my pot. It turns out Squizzy wasn't looking to throw an egg at Bryce. He was looking for one of his pots instead. It's prank time. Tabor's on deck. Squeezy's on deck. At the end of the day, Squeezy's just getting revenge on me. They're either putting something in it, or they may have two of my pots and be tying two together. There's so many different things you can do. However, it's Squeezy. I don't know what he's about to do. One catch. Bryce put the banana on our boat. So let's just go pay around a couple of his spots. Got his floats close together. So Tave has done the rope trick where you uh, the pot will come upside down and it's a little bit hard normally to get over their tipper. So we'll see how Lockie goes with that. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do to him tonight, but I was gonna be nice. Mm. He's always up to no good. It's his turn to get a bit of a uh, bit of a return favour, I think. What he's going to do to the pot, though, I just hope he doesn't do anything which causes us problems. Go grab the rock, mate. Just chuck the rock in this one. Hang on, hang on. There is a bit of a backstory with the rock. The chieftain put that rock in one of my pots about five, six years ago, and I took it home and put it in my garden. But it is a bloody nice-looking rock. You know, you draw a couple of uh, eyes on it and a nose and a smiley face, it'll look like the top of my head, I reckon. Your feet. Well, technically, it's going to be very hard to get out. 
It's a very tight rock. It's just big enough to fit through the neck of the pot. There is an easy way of getting it out. We'll see if he works it out. But I reckon Lockie will struggle a little bit because it's, it's a bloody nice, heavy rock. And he's only a little stick man. Have a look at him. He's only little. Tober did one pot, I did the other. Now the war ends. That is done. The sabotaged pots will sit all night, waiting for Bryce to pull them in the morning. So who are we tying to, Glenn or Squeeze? I'm not nervous heading to the dinner. I'll be nervous when I start stepping foot on other people's boats. She looks tough on that angle. Oh, this thing does its job, but she's a nice boat, this one. They're both nice boats, them two. The bold contender and the chieftain. Bloody beautiful boats they are. Look at the paint job on it. Don't shoot, mate. I come with carrots. <laughs> if we can steam up to Glenn and he can be having a laugh, I'm safe, I think. Because you can't laugh and aim down the side of a gun. We'll throw some fenders out and we'll come along here. Sounds good, mate. You cut it up port side. Yep. That boat is immaculate. I've fished around this boat a little bit in times of camp, but I've never really had the chance to have a good look over it. Oh, mate. Oh, go down there. She's nice and roomy. It's worth every bit of its $800,000 price tag. It looks like a brand new boat, like credit to them all. And what is she, 56 foot, isn't she? Yeah. Before he joins the other skippers, Squizzy's desperate to find out how the fast-moving market hey, go, Mel. has impacted yeah. his handshake deal That's with Buyer um, Mel. We'll do in tomorrow, and I was just wondering how you went with that price. I have heard it's gone up a bit today. Yep, yeah, it sure has. So um, only on one grade it's gone up. Yep. Um, so it's a small fish. Uh, we're looking at 52 to 60 for your reds and 50 for your brindles. Everything else still the same. That sounds awesome, Mel. Thank you. I was ready for a bit of a battle with Mel, but she's come up straight away. Didn't have to say a word. How good's that? As all the fish buyers have said, the small fish are going to go up, and they're going up pretty rapidly. There's over 2,000 fish in that tank. We've still got one shot to go. Mel's is a better deal. It's just... Don't need mass. And I'm wrapped. So I'm happy. Like, I'm really happy. The gamble paid off. I think we were probably a little bit lucky, but it's worked out all right for the bowl contender. I think the banana's gone, I'm hoping. We left that sucker somewhere around the coast. The stress is just gone. Enjoy the last day, enjoy the roast, and just, you know, just have a chat. What's going on, mate? Sold me fish. Oh, did you? Yep. Well, you, you got no complaints then, have you? No. Can't you? Who does? Mill. Who's that? Mel? Oh, you're not giving much away. <laughs> <laughs> he might be getting a better price, so we don't want everyone to know who Mel is so that we don't all ring Mel and all get a better price. No, we're selling Mora to Bartell, so... How much? 50, just 50. I've got a deal. Glenn's got a deal. I'm not sure what's going on with Bryce. Grab us a beer, Ryan. Here you go, Squeeze. Here's a beer. He's a bit of a smart-ass like you, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he? Young fellas these days are smart and they've got balls because I wouldn't have done that at that age to another fisherman. I would have gave him a beer and said, can I get a job, mate? That's what I would have said. How you going, mate? Good, mate. Yourself? Good to see you. Good to see you. Got a little, oh, bro. little present here for you. I'm not going to do it. Huh? No, I'm just going <laughs> to... No, you, I'm you not doing anything. Yeah, it's done. It's fine. Yeah, you can hold it. It's a there. present. You take it. You cook it and enjoy it. Truce. Till next time. Truce. Till next time. Done. <laughs> Till next time. No, I'm not even doing it. I've offered a truce, and this is exactly what I thought. Bryce just does not know when to quit. If there was a boat between us, I know for a fact there wouldn't be a truce. Squizzy would gladly throw an egg because he can get away. But if he does it while we're next to him, he's got to untie a lot of ropes before he gets going. I don't believe this is over, to be honest with you. Either. <laughs> you do this stuff and it just keeps going and going. Okay.
Can we have knives around you, or am I safe? Yeah, mate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, this, this is what I could have done to you the other day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, razor, razor blade, my neck. Mm. Shave me, shave me down. Nah, she's all good. We've sorted that out, so no stress. So this dinner is all about just making up. That's it. We're mates. Just bury the hatchet and move on. At the end of the day, Bryce, don't put another banana on my boat, mate. I don't like it. Oh, you want a banana? You can yeah, take mate. my back with you. Mate, you can keep oh. it on your boat. <laughs> How could you even be sitting down here with a banana hey, on this boat, boat, mate? It's not my boat. Oh, so that don't matter. No, That's I don't care. Room. Mate, if he got rid of the bananas, you might catch a few more fish. <laughs> no, I think that's experience, not bananas. I can't blame a banana for lack of fish. Just don't do it again, mate. Bananas. Oranges? Please. I urge you can buy bananas by the case. I need to stop buying them by the bunch, I think. So you've complained about your bananas. I understand where you're coming from now, Squizzy. Thanks, mate. No more Thanks. bananas. Yeah. Look, we can have fun and games. Um, sometimes it can go too serious and it starts a war. It gets out of control. But at the end of the day, we all know we're here for each other when something goes wrong. That's it. No. I don't know about that, Squizzy. Well... Well, because, honestly, if something Bryce had broke down there that day when he done to me, I would have been... I'd be very reluctant to go and help him. Ooh. I think in this situation with Glenn, I'd rather have him around as a friend than have him as an enemy. I'd probably nearly done 20 days at sea and me fuse was probably a little bit yeah, shorter I'd than probably, normal, yeah. you know what I mean? It's yeah. like... What is it that I shouldn't have done? Mate. I'll quite happily tell you why I was angry. I don't know what you're thinking, you don't know what I was thinking, but I was working through, working north, and you've jumped, what, four boat lengths in front of me and then just threw a pot off. That's what you done. Yeah, it was a, yeah, a couple more boat lengths, but it was But I was, was going to keep it. It working up, up through there, there. Yeah. so and then I'm like, yeah. well, now you've just set a pot and you're working north, it's like, well, I've just got to turn around. Like, honestly, you can't do that. You, no. You, Kicking the guts. Mm. <laughs> yes. No, I won't do Did that. Did you again. get anything out of him? That was a good pot. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a lot. It was a healthy pot. Honestly, I think he's listened and took it on board, so we'll just have to see how it all unfolds. Like next time we're fishing around together, we'll just see what he does. I was a deckhand for 15 years before I uh, was a skipper, so I learned all the rules of the deckhand. Oh, I was the same. I was just Deckhand, deckhand, deckhand. Yeah. You see how you, you follow how people operate. Yeah. Like, how much deckhand have you actually done? Like working well, on I, the deck. I, I'd, I'd worked on the chieftain ten times since I was a young kid. That was it. So you done like yeah, ten trips. Yep. And then I went and did enough hours to get my coxswains, and then we bought my first boat. I went straight from. No wonder you got no idea, mate. Because yeah. you got not really got a real lot of no. experience, have no. you? Really. No. I'm sitting here thinking. Ryan's done like 30. Like, he's got way more experience than Bryce has, and it's amazing. It's like a total shock. No wonder I've never fished around you before, mate. You haven't done much I've fishing, done it, have you? Not at all. <laughs> Lockie, Lockie nearly done more sea, sea time than me, but being that he'd done a lot of uh, different boats and things like that. But no, I'd, nothing, nothing. One thing you can't do is buy experience. You can't buy experience. Mm. And if you could buy experience, it'd be worth a lot of money to buy. I'll tell you what you could do. You could write this down for me, and then I can buy it off you. And then I can buy experience. <laughs> That's, uh... He is cocky. He's confident and cocky. I can honestly see Bryce will make it as a fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I thought I'd just dress up for the occasion. There's no way I'd wear anything like that on my boat. Well, yeah. I wouldn't wear anything like it anywhere. <laughs> Big banana. You look like a flog. He won't be wearing that on my boat. No way. I'd burn that. I got you one as well, Squeeze. <laughs> Just an XL. You're only a small fella. I'm not interested, mate. <laughs> well played, mate. Well played. A few boys are telling me the truth. I'm tipping you're just in front, Squizzy. That's just me. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, got over just 2,000 fish. A bit over. I'm not sure how many over, but we're a bit over. How honest are you, though? 
I'm semi honest. You know. Semi honest. <laughs> <laughs> Squeezy, it wouldn't surprise me if you haven't got three thousand. Actually, it, nothing would surprise me of you, mate. Nothing. How are you going, Emmy? You got not enough. Not enough. You've never got enough. Never have got you? enough. Never got enough. No, no, yeah. Not content with what we have, but we'll see. how many you got then? I'll tell you. If you threw the bananas off the boat, you'd probably have another 500 on it. Per <laughs> 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 banana? Hey, 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 yeah. hey, hey. No, nah, I feel like I'm the piggy in this the This is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happened. <laughs> oh, I think there was malice in there. He got his shiny head. Last morning. Woo! Ready for home. Day 10, we've had our ups and downs. And I hope today's the biggest up we got, unloading. We need this day to go well. I want everything to go smoothly. We need to get these pots up, hopefully have a great shot, and get these fish to mill. She needs them to get them to market. One of the probably biggest decisions I've got today is to work out how many I'm going to hold for Saturday to sell off the wharf to the public. We've been advertising for a few days to sell off Margate Wharf. I want to have enough for everyone to get one, but I don't want to get stuck with any either, because that would be a bit of a disaster. So I do want to sell out. It is a beautiful sunrise till I turn around and see Tobin. First one of the morning, beautiful day out here. After last night's dinner and all the talk of lobster numbers, Bryce is concerned he doesn't have enough. He needs at least 120 fish this morning to reach his one and a half ton goal. And that could be even harder to achieve now that Squizzy has messed with the Chieftain's pots. We think Squizzy's booby trapped us. We'll see. Nothing on this one by the looks of it. See what's in it. See if there's anything happening in 18 fathom. Squizzy's out in about the 30 odd. Man, this one, we're safe on this one. There's lobs in the pot. The suspense is going to keep building. A few nice beetles in that pot, Luggy. Look at them. Fiver. I think it's this one. It's not where I left it. Yep. <sighs> I'm nervous. Like, it's close, but it's just nothing like the others. Yeah. We really didn't have to wait long. Squeezy's little booby trap. What have we got here? They've tied the floats together and we got 10 foot of slack line. Oh, no. It's like someone tied them together on purpose. Did you put a banana on a boat, Loggy? No, nah, but I definitely know how to tie knots better than this. What's in the pot? It's the rock. The famous rock. You've done well, guys. You've, you've done well. You know, the old contender, they gave it a crack. But at the end of the day, a rock won't fool me. It's Squizzy's revenge for sure. It's a heavy rock. Well, I thank you for the rock. You can have that back. Um, as for me skewer the bait. Savers. Come on, mate. They're $5 a skewer now. $7.50 a skewer now. Uh, yeah. I meant to give them to you last night. I forgot. So they are on here, mate. Lucky like struggled to pick the pot up, so. Roger Dodge, mate. Ah, well, payback. If it wasn't your father's boat and you owned it, I would have made an omelette out of it. You would have made an omelette out of me? Ooh. <laughs> He'll own that chicken one day, I reckon. And then, if he does anything, I'll leak it. We're all even, mate. Like I said, war ends right now. Squeezy can say it's over all he wants, but it's never over. Mate, next time it won't be one banana. It's going to be a bunch of bananas. You don't know when the war is over. Bowl contender out. Let's go home and get paid and spend some time with the family. That might be Squeezy's plan, but his vessel has other ideas. Our throttle cable's about to break. I can feel huh? it. Our throttle cable's about to break. There's three sensors you've got on a boat. Your ears, your smell, and you feel. And I can feel something's not quite right with the throttle cable. 
feel it, I can feel it going. So that puts the revs from the wheelhouse down to the motor. So when I want more power in forward or reverse, that's what gives it to me. That controls all that. Without it, uh, <laughs> we're a dead ship. She's gone. This is disaster. Uh, the throttle cable's gone. We've broke down. We've got nothing. Can you take it out of gear? No, I can't. I've broke everything. I reckon it's broke that. At the end of the day, we have a broken boat. We don't have full control. If you don't have full control when you're at sea, it is scary. If we can't fix this and get in today, I don't know if Mills Price is there tomorrow. Yo, how you going? Yeah, not bad, mate. What's, uh, where you shooting tonight, or are you not shooting tonight? Oh, yeah, I am. Um, outside Dacteen's Island, 20 fathom stuff, I reckon. Yep, no, that's where I was gonna pop in too, so. Oh, I'll, yeah, uh... there's plenty of bottom there, so should be right. Yeah, and Glenn, I'd say he's inshore, isn't he? Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, nah, he's having one more short gun in tomorrow too. All right, well, we'll see you up the road here. All right, kill them spuds. Oh, I think Glenn was doing spuds, actually. So, we'll work her out. All right, I'll talk to you shortly. He's pretty keen to have a bit of a dinner tonight, me, Glenn and Squiz and, and the crew. I think we're gonna have it on the Chieftain. There's just a bit more room, it's a bit cleaner. We look after it a bit better, so we'll have it on the Chieftain and I don't mind doing the clean up afterwards, just in case there's some repercussions of my childish behavior. He sounds happier, probably because he's going home tomorrow. Less to stress about. However, we still don't have enough fish on to be happy. And that's the difference between having... Probably got me in the, the best place to throw an egg. Speaking of the devil, he's pulling my pot. It turns out Squizzy wasn't looking to throw an egg at Bryce. He was looking for one of his pots instead. It's prank time. Tabor's on deck. Squizzy's on deck. At the end of the day, Squizzy's just getting revenge on me. They're either putting something in it, or they may have two of my pots and be tying two together. There's so many different things you can do. However, it's Squizzy. I don't know what he's about to do. One catch. Bryce put the banana on our boat. So let's just go pay around with a couple of his pots. Supposed to give. So Tave has done the rope trick where you uh, the pot will come upside down and it's a little bit hard normally to get over their tipper. So we'll see how Lockie goes with that. I wasn't sure what I was going to do to him tonight, but I was going to be nice. Mm. He's always up to no good. It's his turn to get a bit of a uh, bit of a return favour, I think. 
What he's going to do to the pot, though, I just hope he doesn't do anything which causes us problems. Go grab the rock, mate. Just chuck the rock in this one. Hang on, hang on. There is a bit of a backstory with the rock. The chieftain put that rock in one of my pots about five, six years ago. And I took it home and put it in my garden. But it is a bloody nice looking rock, you know? You draw a couple of uh, eyes on it and a nose and a smiley face, it'll look like the top of my head, I reckon. Your feet. Well, technically, it's going to be very hard to get out. It's a very tight rock. It's just big enough to fit through the neck of the pot. There is an easy way of getting it out. We'll see if he works it out. But I reckon Lockie will struggle a little bit because it's, it's a bloody nice, heavy rock. And he's only a little stick man. Have a look at him. He's only little. Toba did one pot, I did the other. Now the war ends. That is done. The sabotaged pots will sit all night, waiting for Bryce to pull them in the morning. So who are we tying to, Glenn or Squeeze? I'm not nervous heading to the dinner. I'll be nervous when I start stepping foot onto other people's boats. She looks tough on that angle. Oh, this thing does its job, but she's a nice boat, this one. They're both nice boats, them two. The bold contender and the chieftain. Bloody beautiful boats they are. Look at the paint job on it. Don't shoot, mate. I come with carrots. <laughs> if we can steam up to Glenn and he can be having a laugh, I'm safe, I think. Because you can't laugh and aim down the side of a gun. We'll throw you some fenders out and we'll come along you. Sounds good, mate. You cut it up port side. Yep. That boat is immaculate. I've fished around this boat a little bit in times of camp, but I've never really had the chance to have a good look over it. Oh, mate. Oh, go down there. She's nice and roomy. It's worth every bit of its $800,000 price tag. It looks like a brand new boat, like credit to them all. And what is she, 56 foot, isn't she? Yeah. Before he joins the other skippers, Squizzy's desperate to find out how the fast-moving market hey, go on, Mel. has impacted yeah. his handshake deal That's with Buyer Mel. Um, we'll do in tomorrow, and I was just wondering how you went with that price. I have heard it's gone up a bit today. Yep, yeah, it sure has. So, um, only on one grade it's gone up. Yep. Um, so, it's small fish. Uh, we're looking at 55 for your reds and 50 for your brindles. Everything else is still the same. That sounds awesome, Mel. Thank you. I was ready for a bit of a battle with Mel, but she's come up straight away. Didn't have to say a word. How good's that? As all the fish buyers have said, the small fish are going to go up, and they're going up pretty rapidly. There's over 2,000 fish in that tank. We've still got one shot to go. Mel's is a better deal. It's just... Don't need mass. And I'm wrapped. So I'm happy. Like, I'm really happy. The gamble paid off. I think we were probably a little bit lucky, but it's worked out all right for the bowl contender. I think the banana's gone, I'm hoping. We left that sucker somewhere around the coast. The stress is just gone. Enjoy the last day, enjoy the roast, and just, you know, just have a chat. What's going on, mate? Sold me fish. Oh, did you? Yeah, well, you got no complaints then, have you? Nah. Can't you? Who does? Mill. Who's that? Mel? Oh, you're not giving much away. <laughs> <laughs> he might be getting a better price, so we don't want everyone to know who Mel is so that we don't all ring Mel and all get a better price. No, we're selling more to Bartels, so... How much? 50, just 50. I've got a deal. Glenn's got a deal. I'm not sure what's going on with Bryce. Grab us a beer, Ryan. Here you go, Squeeze. He's a beer. He's a bit of a smart-ass like you, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he? Young fellas these days are smart and they've got balls because I wouldn't have done that at that age to another fisherman. I would have gave him a beer and said, can I get a job, mate? That's what I would have said. How you going, mate? Good, mate. Yourself? Good to see you. Good to see you. Got a little oh, bro. present I'm here for you. I'm not going to do it. Huh? No, I'm just going <laughs> to... No, you, I'm you not doing anything. Yeah, it's done. Yeah. You can hold it. It's a there. present. 
you take it. You cook it and enjoy it. Truce. Till next time. Truce. Till next time. Done. <laughs> Till next time. No, I'm not even doing it. I've offered a truce, and this is exactly what I thought. Bryce just does not know when to quit. If there was a boat between us, I know for a fact there wouldn't be a truce. Squizzy would gladly throw an egg because he can get away. But if he does it while we're next to him, he's got to untie a lot of ropes before he gets going. I don't believe this is over, to be honest with you. <laughs> you do this stuff and it just keeps going and going. <laughs>